Hello, and welcome to today's lesson here at the Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. We are located at 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37403. Good evening, beloved saints. Again, it is an honor to uh, be with you as we study the Word of God, God's Holy Word. I always count it a pleasure and an honor when God allows us to come together to study his word. And I'm trusting and believing that uh, here in the months to come, that the Lord will allow us to come back together for Bible study collectively. I thank God for this outlet that he's allowed us to do online in doing our Bible study. But I, I look forward to when God will lift uh, this, this situation that we're going through with this virus and allow us to come to God's house collectively on Wednesdays for Wednesday night Bible study. I'm thankful for this this platform, but I am looking forward to it. And the reason being, you'll see in tonight's lesson, we're again, we're doing out of the, the epistle of Jude. And if you recall on last week, we were only able to do one verse, which was verse six. Well, on this Bible study uh, evening, we're going to uh, do verse 7 of Jude, uh, just the one verse. And we, we will do like we did on last week. We have some other locations from God's word that we'll have to go, go to to get a deeper understanding of what Jude 7 is teaching us, what Jude 7 is instructing us. And so be prepared, get your Bibles in hand, and let's get ready to go for a few moments to study and see what the Word of God uh, instructs, instructs us on. I always try to keep it around 30, 35 minutes. That's why I was saying I'd be glad when the Lord lifts this and allows us to come together uh, for Bible study here at church because normally we, we spend about an hour in teaching. But I understand uh, when online the uh, intention span and other things that could be a, a hindrance will cause us to limit our focus in the study of God's Word. So I don't like to uh, go long, about 30, 35 minutes. So we're going to jump right into this, and I hope you've got your Bibles and you've turned to Jude, and we're going to look at Jude uh, verse 7, and then we're going to go to some other areas to see what God gives us out of verse 7. So Jude 7 reads this way, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, you're aware the previous weeks when we started in the book of Jude, God shared with us what Jude names mean. His names mean his name means the Lord. Be praised. He, the Lord, be praised. It's all glory, honor, and majesty is unto the Lord. He and he alone is to be praised. And as the believers of God, as we've studied these, these previous weeks, these last two or three weeks, we've seen God's divine vengeance, his divine judgment, his punishment towards those who are against or rejecting his teaching, his word. And we're going to see that in verse 7. A uh, very fa familiar uh, a book in Genesis that teaches about Sodom and Gomorrah. And it is so relevant to the livelihood of today. Understand this. God's word is not to be compromised. No matter how unpopular from the world's view, God's ways are are the only way. His teachings, his precepts, his statutes, we have to stick with the teachings of God's word. No matter how unpopular it is from the world's view, do not be persuaded and uh, get in of the mindset that the world's values and views are correct. Only God's word is. And so we're going somewhere in, in Genesis, we're going to the Word of God in Genesis and then a few other places in Leviticus and in Romans to see God's Word is 
on point. His word is concise. His word is true. And we must, beloved guys, beloved saints of God, stick with what God's word states and declares. Remember that Jude, his name means he, the Lord, be praised. That's for those of us who are redeemed, who God has enlightened, who God has given spiritual understanding that it's all of the Lord and it's all of him by himself. Now, let me read you uh, verse 7 again. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. The word fornication in, in uh, verse 7 means sexual immorality and going after strange flesh. Strange flesh means men with men, women with women, not the norm, not the natural, not the way God has ordained. Let me make this clear. God has placed man, he has, has commanded that man is to be with woman, woman is to be with man, not man with man, nor woman with woman. That is contrary to God's word. And those of us who are believers of God's word, we don't compromise that. Again, no matter how unpopular it is, we must stick to what thus saith the Lord. So again, it says here, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example. God, through his word, gives the example of what comes in not obeying or giving in or taking, taking down against what God's word says are set forth as an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire the vengeance the vengeance which stands for here the punishment the divine punishment the divine uh, uh, vengeance the divine decision the divine judgment of God turn your Bibles we're coming back to close out uh, this Bible study back in June but turn in your Bibles over to Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. Genesis 19. And we'll start at verse 1 of Genesis chapter 19. Genesis 19. And I'm just basically going to read through because, again, I want to keep us within that 30, 35 minute time frame. But I, pr I pray to God that you refer back and look at God's word. And ask the Lord as you pray and commune with God to give you understanding from his teaching, from the instructions of God's word. Genesis 19, starting at verse 1. And there came two angels, the Bible says, to Sodom at evening. It was evening time. Night was setting in. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, these two men, these two angels, rose up. To meet them. And the Bible says he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Now you have to read in the previous uh, chapters and you'll understand God gave Lot a discernment of who these two angels were. God gave Lot a discernment that these two angels that he saw coming to Sodom were not ordinary men. These angels, these were messengers from God. God had given him that dis divine understanding who these two angels were. So he bowed himself, verse 1 says, in verse 2. And he said, Behold, now my lords, lowercase l, because he recognized they were not Jesus Christ, they were not God, they were uh, uh, types of Christ. These were angels sent from God. He says, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go your ways. And they said, No, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Now Lot, being one who ventured to Sodom, he knew the perversion, the per per perversiveness, the wretchedness, the wickedness. He knew the sexual immorality that was taking place in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now what he was trying to do, he knew by God's divine discernment that these two men, these two men, they were in the shape of men. They were in the form of men. They were coming into a place where it was very hazardous and very 
that will be very harmful to them. Men that these men hadn't seen before. So he, 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 he asked them to come stay with him. Stay with them overnight. He will feed them. They could clean themselves up. And in the morning, get up and go their ways before they will be recognized from these immoral men of the city. Verse 3. And he pressed upon them, meaning that he urged them. He pressed upon them greatly. And they turned into him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread. And they did eat. He showed hospitality. You know, we've been teaching on hospitality as well. Lot showed hospitality to these two angels. And he was trying to keep them out of harm's way. Because again, Lot knew what his surrounding, what they were about. Beloved, know your surroundings. Know the wickedness of the land that we live in. Know the immorality of the land that we live in. Understand, we are in a wretched land that we live in. And God's divine judgments, his divine vengeance, his divine punishment. What you see taking place today with this virus and all that's going on, that's God's divine judgment. That's the God's divine punishment. God still has a vengeance. And he's showing it, enacting it in today's time, just as he's going to show us here in, in, in Genesis, dealing with uh, Solomon and Gomorrah. Verse 4. But before they lay down, before they could go to bed at night, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, he, it's the word of God identifies the men of Sodom, Sodom, surrounded the house, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, old wicked men, old perverse men, young wicked, wicked men, Young perverse men. They knew there were some new men they had never seen that had entered into the city and was at Lot's house. They knew. Notice what happens. Verse 5. They called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Remember, at evening, Lot was at the gate and these two angels approached. Where are the men which came to thee in this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. That's knowing them carnally, knowing them from the flesh. Remember what I said earlier, the commandments of God, man with woman, woman with man, not man with man fleshly, carnally, not woman with woman, fleshly, carnally. Well, I'm going to show you some other scriptures where the word of God declares against that type of situation. But these men, these wicked, immoral men, they came unto Lot. They asked Lot where these men that they knew that came in tonight, where they were. They said they, they were young men, older men. They surrounded Lot's house. And verse 5 says again, they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us. That we may know them again physically, carnally. Verse 6 And Lot went out of the door unto them and shut the door after him. Lot is trying to be one to keep them away and to turn them away from their wretchedness and their sinfulness and the depravity. He's trying to, uh, uh, in a sense, intercede and keep them from harming. These two men. This thing gets deep, y'all. Look, check this out. Lot went out the door, verse 6 says, unto them, shut the door after them. Verse 7 said, Lot says, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. He's saying, he's, he's begging these guys. He's begging these men. These old perverse men. These young perverse men. He says, don't do so wickedly. Behold now. Look at what Lot does. Look what he offers. Behold. Now, Lot says, I have two daughters which have not known men. They were virgins. They had never been with a man, had known a man carnally or known a man uh, physically. He says, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, oh my God, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. 
For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Did Lot knew there was something different, miraculously strange about these two men. Even so, he was willing to present his two daughters to these wicked, immoral, depraved men. But depravity, wickedness, wickedness has no boundary. Depravity has no boundary. Immorality has no boundary. It will go beyond what our, mag our minds can imagine and, and, and can think. He shall be praised, Jude names me. The Lord shall be praised. If you and I are the redeemed and saved of God, praise God, honor God, worship God, because wickedness, the only reason we have some sense and sanity of decency is because God has given it to us. And if he does not give it to give it to an individual, we're going to see that here momentarily. It has wickedness has no boundaries. There's not offered his two daughters to these men. But notice what happens. They say it in verse 9. Stand back. They say it again. This one fella, they're talking about Lot here. This one fella came in to sojourn. He came amongst us. And he will needs be a judge. He wants to be a judge amongst us. They're being sarcastic. They're being, being fickle toward Lot. It says, now will we deal worse with thee than with them? If you don't get out of our way, you ain't, you ain't seen nothing what we're going to do to you. Not only mentally, but physically. And any other way, how, how deep we'll go to harm you. He says, and they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot. They, they pressed on Lot. And came near to break the door. Lot's at the door trying to hold these men out. And they're pressing Lot. And pressing them upon his door. And, and they tell him Lot, if you don't get out of the way, you haven't seen how bad it's going to be for you if you don't let us get to these men. And this man Lot has offered his daughters. They could care less about the daughters. They wanted these men. They wanted new meat, fresh meat from a man. And they were men. Look at verse 10. But the men, that's the angels, Put forth their hand, pour Lot into the house, into the house to them, and shut the door. Now that shows you these were supernatural beings. They weren't ordinary men. Because you remember now, all the men of the city, this immoral city, they were surround, they had surrounded Lot's house. All these men pressing upon the door. They tearing and beating at Lot, pushing in, about to tear the door down. These men had the strength supernaturally to open the door, pull a lot in, and withhold the, that, that mass of people who are trying, they're seditious. They're men who are insurrection. But these men, these supernatural men, could hold back what they were trying to do because they were, they were angels sent from God. Notice what the Bible says. Verse 11, they smoked the men that were at the door of the house. These angels that, that, that were there, they struck these men. And the Bible said they struck them with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. They smote them in such a way, they, they didn't know whether they were blinded. They didn't know where the door was, but they still, they still trying to reach. <laughs> they were blind in sight, but them, their wickedness was still present. They, 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 they were not blind to the fact that I shouldn't do this anymore. Because they still, they wore themselves out, still trying to find the door. But these supernatural beings struck the door, struck these men, got Lot in to safety. They pulled him in to safety. That's what the Lord has done for us, you all. God has sent, and we have guardian angels that protects us, that watches over us, even in the midst of all this madness. That's why he shall be praised. The Lord shall be praised. The Lord has us protected in the midst of all this madness that's going on, in this immorality, in this wickedness, in, in, in all the wicked ways of mankind. Thank the Lord, he has, us, he has us protected. The men said in verse 12, unto Lot, these the angels, has thou here any besides, son-in-law, thy sons, thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. They were sent there by God to deliver Lot and his belongings and those who are 
or close to him out of this wicked, immoral, depraved condition. They were sent there purposely for a lot. And when God sends and, 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 and protects you purposely, and not only you, but those who are with you, those are grounds to be grateful and be thankful to, to the Lord. Look at verse 13, what these men said. These angelic supernatural beings. For we will destroy this place, they said, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. The Lord sent these angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. These, 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 these wretched places. These places of more cor cor immoral corruption. These places of wickedness. Lot went out in verse 14. Spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked the verse, the word of God says, unto his son-in-law. They thought he was joking. They didn't take him serious. They And to get caught up in the values and the schemes and the wickedness of this world, when truth comes and deliverance comes, and comes boldly if you are so consumed with the wickedness of this world you will think it's a joke it's like the boy who cried wolf and they, he was playing around until a wolf really came and, and no one took him serious here Lot is saying up get you out of this place because he, they have been warned this place is going to be destroyed for the wickedness and the immorality and the depravity and and God sent a message to these, these sons-in-law of, 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 of Lot, but they didn't take heed. It was a joke to them because they were consumed in the ways of this world. Verse 15 says, And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity, the punishment of this city. Because the son-in-laws, they had said the son-in-laws, but the son-in-laws, you've heard the term on the down low. And they probably weren't even on the down low. They weren't even trying to hide it. They were with men, men. They were Lot's son-in-law. So they had the, the, the women, his wife, but they they didn't want to go with the wife. They wanted to stay with the men. Look at this depraved, wicked situation. And you think this is this is not biblical uh, 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 fiction this is biblical truth because you see that today you see the outward and the boldness and, and how the projection of gaiety and men with men and women with women there is no shame behind it and people think it is a joke when you're telling them the truth that you are going to be destroyed and, and they laugh at that and they laugh and mock you if you're standing for truth, stand on the truth of God's word. There is nothing new under the sun. When the morning arose, verse 15 says, the angels hasten Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the punishment, in the iniquity of the city. Verse 16, and while he lingered, Lot lingered. It had gotten Lot. Now he came for him, but he, in his mind, should I go? You know, my sons-in-law, I've come here. Should I leave? Should I go? He lingered. The angels, the men, laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him outside without the city because not lingered. It ain't even got in him, even after all he had witnessed, all he had been through, how these men threatened. If you don't get out the way, you ain't seen the harm that's coming to you. And, and Lot was delivered by the hand of God. But he lingered. And God in his mercy. You remember back in Jude in verse 2 where the Bible says God's love and mercy and, and grace was multiplied. Well, Lot and his wife and his daughters are receiving the multi multiplied grace of God in delivering them out of this city that's going to be destroyed. Destroyed. That's what God has done for us, beloved. He has multiplied his grace. When the Bible says his mercies are new every morning, he, we receive multiplied mercies and grace every day. Look what it says here in verse 16 again. While he lingered, 
The men laid hold upon his hand, the angels, the angelic beings, and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and sent him without outside the city. And verse 17 says, And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, outside, that he said, the angel said, one of the angels said to Lot, Escape for thy life. Look not thou behind. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain. Lest thou be consumed. Lest thou be destroyed. We've gotten you out of here. We've delivered you, your wife, your daughters out of here. Now, don't look back. Just get on to the mountains. Go press towards the mark. Do not look back. When God delivers you out of situations, some people that's listening in this broadcast, on this broadcast might have been in a more wicked situation and the Lord delivered you out of that situation. Do not look back. You might have engaged in homosexuality. You might engage in situations like that. The Lord has delivered you out of that. Do not look back. There's danger in that. We can ready to see here momentarily. Lot said in verse 18, and Lot said unto them, Oh, not so my Lord. Lot said, I'm an old man. There's mountains. I, and here is doubt even in all the mercy if God was merciful enough and, and, and mighty enough to deliver him outside of the city miraculously because remember back over there they took the angels took Lot his wife and daughters by the hand and next thing you know Lot outside the city but here Lot again the carnal mind he saw the mountains fall and he said oh not so my lord because he was an aged man and he felt like I can't make it that far but notice the mercy of God. Look what the Bible says. Behold now, verse 19, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shown unto me in saving my life. And I, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Now, now think about what Lot is saying. Remember back in Jude, the multiplied grace of God. Well, Lot here is giving testimony of that. Thy servant hath found grace in thy sight. Yes, Lot, God's grace has brought you out from being destroyed. And thou hast magnified multiple mercy, magnified thy mercy in saving my life. And if he's done that now, Lot, if he's done that now for us, don't you think God is going to protect us and cover us from what he's going to destroy, getting us to the mountains or where he's going to get us to? He's able, y'all. He says... And I cannot escape the mountain, lest evil take me. Look at verse 20. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. There was a, 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 a city that was not as far away to the mountain. It was called Zor. It's Bella. It was a place of refuge. That Lot looked and said, let me get to this city. Let me get to this little place, rather than try to make it to the mountains. He, I, I'm weary, I've been up all night, I've been beat down. God knows this, but we all know this about God. If he delivered us from that, he can get us to the mountain without us being destroyed. But so many times, doubt sets in our mind. Even after the Lord has delivered us out of a situation, we still have doubt in our mind. But God reminds us, his grace is sufficient, beloved. Notice what happens even after life says all this. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted. That word accepted here means favored you. This is the Lord talking to Lot. He says, see, I have accepted you. Accepted thee concerning this thing also that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. You're going to make it. You're going to get there. I'm, I, 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 I'm showing you favor. I, you are in the, the accept, accepted of the beloved. That's how it's a blessing to know that you saved and know that you are to be in the beloved of Jesus Christ. Notice what he says. Hasty, go quick, escape thither, for I cannot do anything to thou become thither. This is the Lord saying, because God, again, you heard, he had to do, do that old cliche, religious cliche, which my people here at Friendship know I teach against. He didn't have to do it, but he did. That's a lie. He had to do it. He delivered Lot. He had promised he was going to deliver Lot. Because we'll get back to the work. And he did. 
He had promised Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be destroyed. And it was. God had to fulfill his promise. If he said it, he had to do it. So he's saying here again, uh, hasty, quick, get on, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. I promise to deliver you. I'm going to deliver you. I will not destroy the city till you're safe. That's God. That's the grace and mercy of God. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The word Zor in, 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 in here means insignificant. It's an insignificant city, but it's a place of refuge. A lot of things that we look as ins ins insignificant, God uses that insignificant situation and makes it a place of safety for us, a place of refuge. God takes the base things and make them to work out for our good. Zor, this city, when, when, when Lot said, I can't make it to this mountain, let me get to Zor. Let me get to this little insignificant city. And God said, okay, be it so. Because I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But my promise is to get you to safety. Haste, get there. And then the, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah will take place. Look at verse 23. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. The sun had come up. Remember the evening before, all kind of wickedness, all kind of despicable things. The men who, who were just so corrupt immorally, they were trying to beat down and get to these two angelic beings that, that Lot saw coming into the city. But now the sun is rising. And notice what takes place. Verse 24, 24 to 29. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord. Not just haphazardly. It's from the Lord. It's the Lord's doing. A lot of people say, what kind of God is that? What kind of Lord? A sovereign God who means what he says. If he says it, it will be fulfilled. God cannot lie. If he speaks it, it's going to be done. And we must understand in our, if immorality is governing us, if wickedness is leading us, if corruptness, if corruptness is our way of living, ask the Lord, Lord, give me a mindset of repentance because there is destruction. We saw it last week, what God is going to do to Lucifer and his angels. We saw it with those spies who gave a wicked report how God destroyed them and did not allow them to get to the land of Canaan because of their wicked report. We see so here. God is going to do what he says he's going to do. Verse 25, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. He annihilated all of it. And, but, he, but his wife, you remember back up in verse 17, the angel said to Lot in verse 17, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad outside, he said, escape thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Now look where we are down, look what happened. He wasn't only just saying that for Lot, he was saying it to his wife and to his daughters. But look at the influence of Sodom and Gomorrah on Lot's wife. Look here. In verse 25, and he overthrew those cities, the Lord did, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the earth. Verse 26, but his wife, Lot's wife, looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. She was destroyed. She disobeyed. She didn't live. God had sent two angelic beings to deliver them out of a corrupt, immoral, wicked place that was going to be destroyed. Got them outside. Gave them the instructions what to do and what not to do. With that said, it is important to do what God says do. It is important to do not what the Lord says. If he says, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't look back. Press forward. Lock pressed on. His wife was behind and the influence of Sodom and Gomorrah was so prevalent in her that she looked back. Got that close. It's a shame to get that close and be destroyed. But the only way, beloved, we can make it, God has to give us the endurance and the perseverance to make it all the way. The only reason you and I don't look back and be consumed and turn into a pillar of salt it's the Lord's doing. We've had many who started out with us. God appeared as if he had delivered them out. 
but they look back. They went back. You know, that you can think of situations in your life with people who it seemed like they were doing good and been brought out. But they looked back. They went back. And they were consumed and they were destroyed. Lot's wife became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood, the Bible says, where he had stood before the Lord. Go back and read verses 18 and 17. You'll get some understanding. I mean, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 17 and 18. You'll get some understanding of what's going on with Abraham here. And the Bible says here, and he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham did, it's talking about. And toward all the land of the plain. And beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. I mean, just total annihilation. Every Sodom, Gomorrah, those cities that was in the plain, all the growth, everything that was there, God destroyed completely. Abraham saw the smoke rise up. And look at verse 29. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered, he was mindful, he remembered Abraham. He remembered the promise that he had gave, given Abraham. Sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. When you go back and go back and read, all you have to do is go over one verse, or one chapter in verse 18 from 22 to 33, and it talks about when Abraham pleaded to God, you know, if you can find 50 men, don't destroy the city. And he went down to 10. And God said, if it's 10 men, I won't destroy it. Well, there was only two. I mean, it was only four who came out. And only three made it. Because the angels took Lot, his wife, his two daughters. Didn't even, it wasn't even 10 people in that city. Because if it had been, God wouldn't have destroyed it. Because Abraham petitioned Lord. Started out with 50. And God is so gracious and mercy came all the way down to 10. But there was, there was four, which went down to three. And then when Genesis, uh, just, just for you know, Genesis 12 and 3, God said to Abraham, he says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And these shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Lot was one of the families, him and his daughters. Were ones that God was talking about to Abraham, how he blessed and delivered them from Sodom and Gomorrah. Beloved, we won't make we'll pick up it's so much because I want I gotta take you to some more verses about this. Because this this madness in this world with sexual perversion, sodomy, wickedness, corruption, sedition, insurrections. The madness that's going on and God's judgment, his vengeance, his condemnation, his punishment is relevant, is real. And people are looking at all this that's going on and thinking it's a joke. Just as Lot's sons-in-law Lot sons thought it was a joke. They mocked. Be not deceived, beloved. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth. So shall he reap. If God declared it and decreed it, it will be done. God is in control. God is not to be played with. God is not to be toyed. And if any time we need truth and none compromising the word of God, we need it now. And people in church, you got men with men in church. You got churches that have a pastor and a man that's supposed to be the first husband. That's wrong. You got gay activity all throughout within the church world. That's wrong. And just as God showed in, in this lesson, and we'll show him some lessons to come up, God's not playing. He has a wrath. He has a vengeance. And his wrath and his vengeance is real. And for those of us who God has given this understanding, be appreciative. He, he alone, Jude names mean he shall be praised. The Lord be praised. Praise the Lord that he has delivered our corrupt flesh, our wicked flesh. Whew. Thank God for his goodness. We'll pick back verse 7. Read over there. Go back and read. Go back and read Genesis 
chapter 18 and 19. We're going to go further looking at what the word of God identifies with this wicked corruptness that's taking place in Sodom and Gomorrah in this world today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word is not to be compromised. Now, Lord, I pray that as the teaching of your word goes forth, you will give people, your people, I know you've given your people ears to hear and understanding. There might be someone that you have tuned in that has not received understanding as of yet. I pray, Lord, yet means now, meaning now and then that now that you will give understanding spiritually of the truth of your word and you will deliver. You're still delivering. You deliver Lot and his two daughters from being destroyed. You are delivering still today in 2021. I know you to be a deliverer because you delivered me. And all of us who are the redeemed of God, we can acknowledge in our corrupt ways, in our wicked ways, in our immoral ways. It was you, Lord, who lifted us and brought us outside and set us to a place of refuge, a place of safety. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for your word. I pray the word of God was made clear. If so, it's by your hand we glorify you because it's by you that any clarity can be had from the teachings and instructions of your word. We bless your name, Lord, and you, we acknowledge you, the Lord only, is to be praised. Thank you again for this day. Protect these, your people. I pray for this world. I pray for all that's going on in this world. I pray for the president who was inaugurated today, President Biden and Vice President Harris. I pray that you will lead them in a the direction, lead our country in the way that it should go to glorify God. I know you would do it for your redeemed people. Everybody is not going to give ear. You've already declared that. But for those of us who you have given ear to, Lord, make us bow to your will. Make us bow to your way. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we do pray. And for Jesus' name's sake, amen. Thank you, Jesus.